Hello, this is Team One. Today we will talk about analysis of double buy heat exchangers. First of all, we made several assumptions. Steady state, fluid properties remain constant are evaluated at temperature of T1. Adiabatic heat exchangers, inner pipe will always be the warmer fluid, clean heat exchanger, counter flow heat exchanger. Fluid properties for both fluids, warm and cold, will be obtained from table B or from online resource. For tubing sizes, we have inside and outside diameters. For inside diameter, we have two kinds, tubular and annular. But for outside, we just have tubular. For flow areas, we use these equations to obtain the tubular and annular flow areas. Fluid velocities, we have four kinds of velocities, tubular, annular, tubular mass velocity, and annular mass velocities, and will be obtained using these four equations. For the annular equivalent diameter, we must first see the inside diameter of the annular pipe, which is figure one. Figure two shows the outside diameter of the pipe, and figure 3 shows the inside diameter of the pipe. For friction factor calculations, we must first find the hydraulic diameter, which is the inside diameter of the annular pipe minus the outside diameter of the inner pipe. For heat transfer calculations, the equivalent diameter must be used. The equivalent diameter equals the inside diameter of the annular pipe squared minus the outside diameter of the inner pipe squared divided by the outside diameter of the inner pipe. After both diameters have been found, the hydraulic diameter must be used in order to find the Reynolds number for the pressure drop, and the equivalent diameter must be used to find the Reynolds number to find the nozzle number. Once we calculate Reynolds numbers for the inner pipe's inner diameter and the double pipe effective diameter, we must determine the nozzle's number. If the system is laminar where Reynolds number is less than 2100, we can use the Nusel number equation that is shown on the left hand side of the screen. If the system is turbulent where Reynolds number is greater than 10,000, we must use the Nusel number that is shown on the right hand side of the screen. Keep in mind that we are keeping the warm fluid in the inner pipe and the cold fluid in the outer pipe to maximize heat transfer which means N is 0.4 for the inner fluid and N is 0.4 for the outer fluid. Coefficients for the inner and outer fluid can be determined by using the equations on the left hand side of the screen. In order to use that equation, the thermal conductivity of the fluid must be found using a table. Keep in mind that these values vary with temperature. For the purposes of discussion, we assume that heat is transferred from the fluid within the tube to the fluid within the annulus. It is standard practice to base the resistance on the outside surface area by multiplying it by the sum of the resistance, resulting in the overall heat transfer coefficient, where HI is the convection coefficient between the fluid in the tube and the tube wall, and HA applies between the fluid in the annulus and the tube where HP is the conduction effects. When a specific size of heat exchanger is selected, then the geometry is fixed. The only controls the operator has are flow rate and perhaps in the temperature. In order to determine how effective the heat exchanger operates, it is necessary to calculate the outlet temperature. The equations for calculating outlet temperature are shown below for either counterflow or parallel flow, where R is the thermal capacitance ratio. The equation capital T2 allows us and tells us the outlet temperature of the warmer fluid knowing its flow rate, fluid properties, and only the inlet temperatures. Once capital T2 is known, it can then be used to find the outlet temperature for the cooler fluid, lowercase t2. The log mean temperature difference, LMTD, is a quantitative measure of the difference in temperature between the streams of both ends of a heat exchanger. It is the driven force for the heat exchange between the two fluids. 
as the LMTD value increases, the amount of heat transfer between the two fluids also increase. It can be used for calculating the heat duty of the heat exchanger. The log mean temperature difference in a heat transfer process depends on the direction of fluid flows involved in the process, which is shown for counterflow and parallel flow. Here I'm going to talk about the heat balance equation on a double pipe heat exchanger. As you can see, we got two equal equations, which is a difference on the subscripts. And we have the overall heat transfer equation. The first equation has a subscript of, of a W, which means the heat transfer is from the warmer fluid. It also shows the mass flow and the specific heat of the warmer side. To not, to, to not get confused, we look at the temperature. The T's will let you know the difference of the temperature is from the warmer or the cooler side. Capital T means the fluid is from the warmer side and the little t means the fluid is from the coolest. In a heat exchanger, you want the warmest fluid to be in the inner pipe with the coolest fluid to be in the outer pipe so there won't be no heat loss in the ideal process. The last question is the overall, which involves the resistance, the area, and the long mean temperature. Next, we will discuss the fouling factor and design coefficient. Fouling factor is the scale of dust or dust deposit on the surface of the tubes. This reduces the rate of the heat transfer between the fluids by increasing the resistance to the heat flow through the inner tube wall. The R subscript DI is the inside diameter with the other R subscript of DO is the outside diameter. 1 divided by U with a subscript of O is the exchange coefficient. If you add them all together, you get the design coefficient of 1 divided by U. Now to find the heat transfer area in the tube link, you can do that by doing simple algebra on the heat transfer equation to solve for area. With the area known, now you can find the length of the tube by having the numerical value of area divided by pi in the outside diameter, and that will give you the length of the tube. Part O, friction factors. So for this section, we'll use hydraulic diameter calculations in the annulus flow region and regular inside diameter for the inner tube flow. Now your inner tube will be the hot region, your annulus will be the cold region under our assumptions. So we first calculate the Reynolds numbers for the tube section and for the annulus flow. Now, for your friction factor for laminar flow, we will use in the tube will be uh, 64 over the Reynolds number for Reynolds number being less than 2200. For laminar flow in the annulus, we're first going to use uh, a K factor, which is outer diameter of the tube over the inner diameter of the annulus region. And that's going to be for Reynolds number below 10,000. We will then use the formula associated with that friction factor for that case. For the turbulent flow, both inside the tubes and in the analyst region, we can use the Chen equation or the Churchill's equations. They both result with the same friction factor. After we calculate the friction factors for the analyst region and for the tube region, we will use the major loss equations from modified Bernoulli's to calculate the delta P. The analysis for a shell and tube heat exchanger is then applied to a water-to-water -water system that is used to test the effects of changing tube lengths. Using the software MathCAD, we can find the results. As the tube length increases, the pressure drop for the tube and shell increase. The outer temperature for the cooler fluid increases, the outer temperature warmer fluid decreases, the log mean temperature difference decreases, and the heat balance for the cooler fluid and warmer fluid increase.